down there, up around them. Or whatever you want to call it, front brake, uh, rear brake at the back, quite easily to, to be read. A uh, little barcode here, you scan, so for fun, absolutely brilliant. You know, if, if you hide one for an hour or so, I'm sure you'd enjoy it. And you can, in Milton Keynes, you've got all the pathways that you can use and ride about on and click your little bell. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Post-COVID, we really want to show that it's not necessary to get back into your car. But then secondly, longer term, over 60% of car rides are under three miles long. And actually, those really short journeys do not have to be taken by a car. There are other options, and one of those options is Lime. And then finally, if we are able to remove cars from the streets, we really want to show that there's improved air quality, reduced congestion, which makes all of our urban environments more pleasant for everyone. Cool terminology. Um, and that will kind of give you the electric boost. I'm afraid, yeah. <laughs> I mean, social distancing, I probably shouldn't. No, no, Harry, I'm scared. That's your bell if you cool. feel like someone's in your way. Give them a, a tink. Yeah. Yeah. During the pandemic, obviously there were many bad things, but what we did get to see was actually what our towns and cities look like without cars, without congestion, and with improved air quality. And actually I think it's at this moment people can really rethink their ride, they can think about how they perhaps want to get back to work, um, and that might include an e-scooter. One of the great unknowns uh, about the, the pandemic is what the new normal will be in terms of uh, working patterns uh, when, when, you know, when people come off furlough and get back to work. This time of a day, this car park would normally be full. Uh, so I think when people do return to their offices, they will be looking at new ways of getting around. Uh, and I think e-scooters are very much part of that mix. Well, there's a whole range of issues that rightly are being assessed uh, as part of this pilot. Firstly, there is what, what the demand's going to be, uh, both from people commuting for leisure uh, use. So they'll, over the year, they'll be able to evaluate that. But there'll also be a whole range of uh, safety issues, uh, regulations, insurance uh, that need to be properly assessed as well. Uh, because any time, any time you introduce a new form of transport that's mixed with other forms of transport, you know, there'll, there'll be unintended issues uh, that need to be ironed out. Because uh, once you feel that it's safe and it balances well, you carry on. Yeah. Because if I felt it wasn't... 
When you look at the, the, the data coming out of places like Wuhan and China, post COVID, there was a huge spike in personal car ownership, um, sales of personal cars, and a big spike in micromobility, e-bikes and e-scooters. This is, if we don't get this moment right, what we may see is a reversal of decades of great public policy moving out of cars into other modes of transportation. And that's the big piece that uh, we're hoping to be a part of that solution. We want more people to take fewer cars and take more micromobility, and that's the big shift that we hope to see. When we look at a street, we don't see the cars. Um, and the reason is because we have been so used to the fact that cars take up our roadways, take up our streets, and we're so okay and have accepted the fact that pollution is gonna come from cars and that we're gonna accept the greenhouse gas effects of um, car transportation, that we don't even see it in amidst, um, amongst us as we move around the city.